welcome to our first Love Island uh, mini episode. Um, this week we have with us two journalists who are, you know, savants of like other areas of <laughs> of journalism, but uh, also really love Love Island. So we have Carl, who is a sports journo. Say hi, Carl. <laughs> hi. Thank you for having me, Karen. I've always wanted to actually. And a a Theo, who like does uh, politics, current affairs, sports, entertainment, everything. But hi, Theo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a weird mix. Hello. Thank you for inviting me on your podcast. It's exciting. So, guys, okay, let's just go over what happened this chaotic week in Love Island. Like. <laughs> Mars, wow. <laughs> Mars by People technical going through difficulties, it. but not like technical difficulties in like me saying my camera doesn't work in a Zoom meeting. Like this is like, like a, a boom falling on a person type technical. But <laughs> <laughs> I think the first episode will go down in history as one of the worst like beginning episodes of any reality TV show in SA <laughs> because we were out here. Production is well. Asking me what's KFC? Just... Yo, that killed me. <laughs> that killed me. Oh my <laughs> word! But as like a as a fan, and I'm sure you guys have obviously watched the UK, US, Australia version. Like as a fan, you excitedly telling other people to watch, and then you get that first episode, and I'm just my face is just as that cringe look the whole time because I told people to watch. <laughs> And now I look like a fool. I actually so had a message like typed out to my nephew saying like, come upstairs, come watch. And I never sent it because like, as I, I typed it out and I was planning to send it. And as the episode carried on, I was just like horrified and I just left it. And I was like, no, I'm not going to tell you to come up here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to go through what happened this week. And then we will go into more detail about, you know, what we thought and, you know, what we think is coming. Okay, so we're introduced to our OG, mostly white group of islanders in, in the first episode. And they paired up um, Millie and Jay, Sam and Cage, Rishal and Ian, Eden and Asad, and Timna and Durang. And then Sierra came in as like a spanner in the works. Durang decided he wanted to get to know Millie as well, which caused some drama between him and Timna. And then both Timna and Millie went off him. Sierra decided to couple with Ian which left a shell single, Xavier into the villa. The audience voted to, for him to go on a date with Timna, but he just said eyes for Eden, which caused drama between Eden and Asad. Eden said she needed Asad to be more passionate with her. And he was like, okay, lol. Um, Cage and Summer, which started out very lackluster because he chose her and not the other way around. So it becoming more romantic, but he was also crying because he didn't think he was getting enough affection from her. Then it was the first recoupling. Millie and Jay stayed together. Sam and Cage stayed together. Sierra threw a span in the works by picking a side, breaking up the rocky Eden and a side couple. Rachelle picked a good friend, Durang. Timna picked Xavier. And Eden picked the very conservative Ian. And then Le- Lebo and Chris entered the villa. Lebo decided, you no, know, he didn't want to tell us exactly who he's into. But Chris seems to be feeling Millie. All the girls seem to be feeling Lebo. Mm-hmm. Ian wins a challenge, gets the date of a girl of his choosing in the hot tub. He chooses Rochelle. Rochelle's like, well, okay, we're still just friends. And that's how it ends. So is there anything I miss, guys? <laughs> sure. No, you, um, you pretty much hit the nail I think you there. actually nailed it. Yeah, I forgot to say... Um, <laughs> but it was just... Ian saying that, that Sierra wasn't conservative enough for him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I do like Ian, but I was like, this is Love Island, bro. This is, you know, it's, it's not some other uh, uh, reality show where you can get looking for women for con- with conservative values. Mm. Not that they don't have conservative values, but I'm like, Go to take bro, it. come on. And also, here. like, uh, yes, like, how much more conservative do you want? We're South African. <laughs> we are really conservative as is. And how much more conservative... Like, do you want because, like, at the moment exactly. we're in Friendship Island because yeah. we're, we're like seeing bits of romance, but it's just um pretty uh, much lots of friends, 
Finn Palings. Yeah. And I'm glad you brought that up because mm-hmm. I do think it's a South African thing to to be a conservative. And I think we're very self-aware that we are on camera. This is good. so no one kind mm. of wants to make too much of a wrong move. I do feel that the, that some are within themselves a bit, um, and that's that's coming through. But in the same breath, I don't want to be too harsh on Islanders because this you can't trust this editing team to like build a narrative just yet. So let's. So that's why I'm reluctant to go hard mm-hmm. at someone because I feel like we're missing so many plot lines. Just generally speaking. Can we talk about the fact that like we had a a whole episode dedicated to a um conflict oh that we didn't gosh. see? Exactly. That's what I was saying. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed that it we weren't gonna like... get unseen bits because I thought like that was a, a huge chunk of an unseen bit. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole episode and we just missed it because of technical difficulties and then the voiceover dude's like Oh, just technical difficulties. Thinking that we okay, so, all be so okay with it. Okay, so let's explain the 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 the, the yeah. conflict we're talking about is between Durang and Timna. Emily. So Emily, yeah. So so, catch me yeah. up. They, everyone is talking about something in the bed, a situation in the bed with Timna and Durang. So so what happened? Mm. Like, what did you guys pick up that happened? It, in my mind, it, in my mind, I'm thinking that they obviously had a bit of a blowout about the whole situation, because I, I don't necessarily because it was only after two days, so I don't. Ne- I, I see both sides. Like uh, I, I just feel mm. uh, Duran just came out all guns blazing. You know, he was perhaps a bit too flirty, and I don't think he has the finesse yet. He's still a bit immature. He doesn't have the finesse to maybe chat mm. to two women. Uh, at the same time, I, I, I just, he's lacking that finesse. I think he was just too, going too hard. And Timna wasn't about that. So I kind of, I, I do understand where, where Timna's coming from. He mm. was, he was speaking, he was just too but, active. Sorry, I'm yeah, like. And then, <laughs> like to try again. I don't, I'm <laughs> sorry, like, I, like, I don't, <laughs> like, I don't understand you, like, I think everybody needs to go into Love Island with a bit of a, um, like, like a bit of a friendship island type vibe because there's no one you're going to be a hundred percent committed to within the first few days. So you have to kind of be kind of moving between, between people, just finding out who you like. Cause your first couple is literally just to just your, your life, like your, your entrance into the villa and anything after that is like you getting to know people. But I think what, what Timna was upset with was that he was hiding information or he wasn't being honest. Which is what I got from it. Or he was making up stories about <laughs> Millie, like everything is sexual. <laughs> play when she said play it back, yeah. I mean, like So I think yeah. it's the thing. <laughs> play it back. And we, play it funny. back. And then everyone on Twitter was like, Go, cool, they can't play it back, they don't have it to play it back. <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing I think that people have to get used to, especially like years that like they it's like everyone else who kind of has watched the show knows that like you don't everyone who just pays up mm. there's always a wine couple that will pay up from the beginning to the end. But other than that, everyone else just like, Okay, we're here, we're gonna figure it out as we go along and then like that's what we do. But I think it's because Maybe we're not so used to like casual dating that it's mm. still a bit weird for people to like now, oh, we just paid up and it's like it's a thing, but it's not a thing, but it's a thing. So, yeah. And I also think like I always try and put myself in that situation. It is, mm. it isn't like it to be rejected. Let's be honest. And yeah, I always, I always worry like about because everyone's super young, early 20s. Um, and I worry how they're going to handle their emotions, especially if someone's talking to another guy. I do worry about that. Luckily, Love Island's super controlled with the alcohol thing, so maybe tempers won't uh, play up. But I do feel, uh, I do worry that how these guys are going to handle um, handle their emotions when things get really serious. Because mm-hmm. like you said, it's friendship pilot at the moment. People still feeling their way. But I, I honestly feel, despite the casting errors, despite the editing, despite the um, uh, the narrator, I'm not 100 percent sure I'm about Warren Robertson sure. just yet. 10%. I'm willing to give every, him a chance. Every every episode loses ten percent. 
Uh. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. It's cringe. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we did miss a beat with the with the hosting the ratership there. There's no doubt there was a. I think there was a, a mm. opportunity to get someone really spicy. I'm not saying the guy can't do it, mm. but it, it's not feeling. It doesn't have that premium edge. And but the Love Island UK guy Ian Sterling, he's a very tough actor yeah. to follow. So I wasn't yeah. expecting that those heights. But there's there's not a. I think what I don't know. There's just something missing. There's an edge missing. For Love Island, um, I just I mean I don't think he's a bad yeah. narrator. I just think he's bad for this. Like he's done other work where he's been great at, but this requires certain level of of. It's, I mean, like a certain level of of understanding the trashiness, but also like like being a like young and in the kind of vogue of what they're into and what you know what the island what the islanders are like yeah. as 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 like in that kind of age group. So I mean, I don't think they should have taken like a twenty year old. I'm yeah. saying, I'm saying like just someone a little bit more in tune with 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 what they are like kind of into. Um, yeah. I do think they missed a the beat with that one. And also someone someone not scared to like say this guy is hot because it's the thing of you selling me this fantasy mm. of like these are really hot people and if you're like this dude that's being awkward about the fact that i'm like i get it that you're straight that's fine but like you have to sell that this dude is hot because otherwise i need to buy the thing more that like i can also see but it's also thing of like i understand like with a woman also, like, you need to really sell mm. that these people are smoking hot and that they the desire, beat. like, everything. Because that's part of, like, allure of Love Island. It's, like... That's so true. You have to kind of just, like, make us be, like, ooh, and then get us talking about them. Because you have to feel that, like, attraction and that heat coming off them. So, and he's not selling that for me. That's actually so true. I remember, like, in the UK one, I don't know if you guys remember Muggy Mike. Rest in yes. <laughs> So the comment, the narrator there sold him so well. Even I was like, yo, Muggy Mike is <laughs> handsome at AF, you know? Yeah. So I do, I, it is important. It is so, important. okay, let's talk about the Eden, Asad, Xavier, Seda situation. So firstly, yeah. I think that it's a... I, I love that know. Eden and Asad are like the colored stereotype come to life. <laughs> <laughs> they like they just were there for the beginning and then they're just like they were the only couple going steady from jump and then already the second day is making a coffee stuff in bed and I was the like, this man. Cry, so you know it's <laughs> and exactly toasting like all also. of my history yeah. so yeah <laughs> i related so much <laughs> i have yeah for me there's so many dynamics to this whole relationship with erin and Assad. like so many um, I will say this, just uh, adding Xavier into the mix. I, I feel like the Xavier mm. um, Aaron conversation at the pool, when they mentioned Rondebosch East and stuff, that was super relatable. But for me, that was like the first mm. um, flirty conversation, first natural conversation of the whole season. I actually left that scene smiling because mm. there was genuine banter. I felt they were very comfortable with each other. Oh. <laughs> That's you guys feel. Um. Someone else pointed out that, like, cl- clearly one of the producers might have gone over and be like, so, Aaron, um, can you just talk to Xavier about being colored? Because other people are confused about the fact that, like, the two of you are very light. <laughs> the two of you are very light. So maybe just have the conversation. Because I was like, that conversation came out. It was so funny. But it was also like, this is so relatable. Because now we're talking about Belleville and, like, all this accents and stuff. And it was like, Ronda Bosch East. Like, Ronda Bosch wow. East. I was like, hey, hey. Because I, 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 I grew up in Crawford, so I was like, you know, there has been a few times where I might have said I live in Rondebosch East. <laughs> so I, was, I got that. But just on Erin and actually Assad, their whole vibe, mm. um, I, I thought it was cool at the start. Um, but like after four or five days, they haven't hooked up. I just don't think mm. they're that into each other or... Or perhaps Assad is not that into him. I think Assad is a very smart guy. Um, I think he's super measured. Um, he's, he's very self-aware of what he's doing. I get that sense. And I don't get the sense that he's too mm. that into Aiden. I think he's, yeah, quite, he's think willing so. to see other options. I mean, I, I was all for it in the beginning because it seemed like they re- they liked each other. And then, but then I just started to realizing that mm. Aiden is actually way more into him than he's into her. 
And I don't think you also like can handle the mm. month, like the intensity mm. that's coming off her. And and Yeah. Did you see his face during the the um <gasps> the game? Yes. When she was touching him because it came up and then <laughs> The face that the side pulled when Aaron was what, touching what was him. Like, that face? Like, like, he, like, what like was awkward, that face? man. Like, he didn't want her to touch. Yeah, it was the ick. It was the ick. It was the... It's like, mmm. There we go. Like, mmm. It's like, yeah. okay, but that, no, no. It was, yeah. I feel, I, I feel, yeah. So that kind of, for me, drives home the, the point that perhaps he's not that, that into her. Like, they're cool and stuff, but I don't think that... Because... I'm sorry, guys, I speak from your own experience, but if you genuinely like someone, you let's say you're on holiday with them in a holiday house, and after four days, you kind of haven't kissed. Ow, they, they would be concerns there, and I, I know that we all take our own time, but if I like someone after night two, um, I would love just a kiss, you know? Because we're feeling but each other. Like, but, it's not that they yeah, have anything else to do. It's not the that they're there. working or anything. It's all I got to do. Yeah, and like someone else also pointed out, to her, like that, like especially kind of when you're within the the house, your relationship will move at a faster mm. pace because you're not going anywhere. You're spending like day in and day out with this person, so naturally things are gonna move at a faster pace. So the fact that mm. like yeah, outside of that game that they the, the, one of the first games that they played that they haven't had a kiss is like it's a red flag. And <laughs> I was really rooting for them. Like I was mm. there. They were mm. my couple. They were cute. I was like, yes, guys, they were the cute couple. And now I'm just like, Ish, Aaron, what are you doing? So can 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 I ask you guys? Sorry, uh, it's almost like uh, it's my podcast, but I, I was wanting to see how other people took this. Was how um, Asad reacted. Um, after mm. Eden spoke about the more affection thing, I felt it was a a bit overblown. Yes, but in this case, I, I also say. feel like we're missing scenes here. But for yes. me, yeah, for me, aside seemed to like uh, he mm. took it a bit too harshly, and I felt he was too hard on Eden, like almost like a bit of a dick. Sorry. No, like it's it's a very valid point. So, sorry to interrupt. That's how I feel because it was a thing of. Maybe we're missing something from the edit because now that's always something we must keep in the back of our minds. But like, it was a thing of like, I was like, my my dude, it was it wasn't that serious, and like he was blowing it out out of proportion. I was like, is it maybe mm-hmm. like past relationship drama that's now having him react this way? But uh, yeah, it just it did seem a bit weird. I but think also it, could I think be it was the edit, the ex, so. to be honest. Like, mm-hmm. I think it's like you know when somebody starts annoying you and everything they do starts to annoy. So I, that's what I thought it was but I mean I also like uh, as you guys both said I didn't know, I thought yeah. it was the edit because I was like did we see a scene where she was going around talking badly about him to everybody because I didn't I saw her talking to Summer which is her friend and yeah. she has every right to speak to her friend about it he talks to his friends about everything he's gonna go all day so like so I was like she has every right to yeah. do that <laughs> but then I was like is she now talking to Xavier Durang everyone now about him yeah and he's back and making him look like an asshole because I didn't see that but um but I but I also partly think that he's mm. done he seems done with her and he just wants looking for yeah, a reason my... to blow it out of proportion yeah uh, but they they don't seem to have that um, that natural chemistry. I mean, aside perhaps, I think there's a lot more layers to aside as a character. Uh, but I don't think Aiden's mm. perhaps going to bring that out in him. So I don't think them they don't have that natural chemistry where I found with Xavier they were bantering properly. That felt supernatural, and I I like Aiden. I think she also has a lot to mm. offer. You know, she's chatting to all the girls, giving them advice. So there's a lot but to like about not, her. Do you think that Savi? Do you think that her and Savi is going to happen, or do you think she's not into it? Because people were saying that she told them not to pick him. Theo, you want to have a go? It. Oh, we talking yeah, about now, Erin and Xavier. Um, they are. I think they the couple that at the beginning they tried to avoid each other, like oh no, and then later down the line. The eventual, we, we all saw it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Because as Carl said, like the 
the chemistry and stuff mm-hmm. is just like you they they buzzing around each other and now Xavier's trying with Millie and I'm just like and then that conversation was really awkward I'm not gonna lie because like when Millie's like sexual chemistry is why with you they were Jay and I was like Ooh, oh. yeah uh, you know and before that scene Theo before that scene I uh, I in my notes I said uh, Xavier's been part of the two most natural, like you, uh, mm-hmm. huma- humanly uh, scenes. The one was with Aiden, and the other one was with Durang. When Durang said, "The guy said he lives in Bantry Bay," and I, I laughed quite hard at that. But then we moved to the, <laughs> then we moved to the Millie co- uh, conversation. Mm-hmm. And I felt he was super stiff, uh, like his natural mm-hmm. self perhaps didn't come out. I would love to see if anything a- happens there. But I felt he was he wasn't like himself. He he, mm. he seems like a very cool, affable guy that people seem to like to chat to. I didn't see that with Millie. So interested to see how that goes. And the funny thing with Carl was just the um when he said, Oh, I'm over my whole phase and everyone's like, But sir, you're only twenty one. <laughs> you only twenty exactly. one. <laughs> what are you, you talking about? Probably still got two or three it's more like, left. Oh I'm like an African um honestly. Like oh, this is why I I, I would maybe believe that POCs weren't um, entering the bachelors and the bachelor is because, you know, young people aren't ready to settle down in South Africa. We, we settle down quite late. But also mm. that, like, they would be more likely to enter a show like Love Island because you know it's just for fun. Like, I mean, yes, people looking for love. But, I mean, you know yeah. that, you know, it's more like I'm looking for a boyfriend more than I'm looking for a husband type situation. So, um, so that's how I was like, uh, that's how I was like, mm. them f- finding it difficult to find castmates. I, I find it harder to believe with Love Island than with, with like the other type dating shows. Mm-hmm. So, um, mm. uh, I find that hard to believe as well. But like, I, I mean, the, there's so many dating reality shows with POCs. Um, and this is a mm. Love Island is popular. And people of color have been watching uh, the um, the international versions of Love Island, like a whole host, like Murad Murali he does um, uh, reviews of Love Island. He, there's so many South Africans and POCs that watch this UK guy's reviews of Love Island. So I don't believe that there wasn't enough uh, people of color entering. I, I, yeah, I, we haven't even discussed the production, how these guys are making the decisions. It's just like, how did you mm. not know this was going to happen? This was going to be the fallout. Ridiculous. So some sidebar information that um, mm. like I just appled to some across once was that um, via someone who had told me this, but it was someone within like um, multi-choice and stuff, had that Love Island, um, just the UK version, was one of their kind of top shows. And they, they, they were trying to, um, kind of because I asked about season five and then there was like a this was before we got it and it was a thing of like oh we don't actually really want to um, say that this is kind of like one of the big shows in SA because then yeah. they're going to charge us more to kind of get the show yeah so oh. it was like so they were trying to kind of like almost like yeah underplay how big of a thing like the show is kind of with their audience and stuff so that was just really interesting the production team have definitely tried to undersell how much the the show is worth because I mean it's been poor, seriously. I mean, <laughs> if they really wanted to, sh- they've really showed how little people <laughs> care with their production. If that's supposed to showcase how important the show is, then it's clearly. But I mean, not I, I like, I... yeah, but like some of the best fun. <laughs> but I mean, I do dragging. think it's, it's it's working, like the dragging, because it's getting better. And I think they're starting to realize, like, shit, we need to get our stuff in order. Mm. Yes! Yes! 100%. Ah, that, Can we just our... acknowledge this last yeah. night's episode was the best one so far? Yes. I, I wrote it in my notes. Like, in terms of their scenes and, their, mm. and like, just building their narratives, it was the best. Um, I did say the narrator needs to give context more with before scenes. You don't mm. hear his voice. We're just moving from scene to scene. And I think that's important. But uh, just on that, like, I think I can always get invested yeah. in people. And that's why I know I'll watch this to the end. Um, despite the production stuff, I feel like there's enough for me to get invested into into some of the people. 
So I'm here till the end. So not, nothing's going to stop me from watching this despite For me, it's like, I'm actually just deeply curious. Like, I'm so in... This is the first time we've had a multiracial dating show. Like, a like purely multiracial dating show in mm. a long time. Like, I can't, maybe in the 90s we had, like, like, type shows. But, like, not like this. Just to understand, like, how far we've come as a country. Mm. Just see how people will date within or outside their racial lines. How we treat different like people of different races mm. within like this context. Like we, we we can always go off of like stories or what people have told us about their lives, but we, we, we haven't had a chance to see it up close on our screens. Like, you know, we can I mean we can talk about UK and US and all that stuff, mm. but like South Africa is like such a interesting chasm of a country and it's been such a short time that we've been properly integrated. That's so beautiful. how does that affect um dating and relationships 20 years into the future. I think, like, as a social anthropology project on itself, it's very interesting. And I think that's what's going to keep me watching till the end, just to see how it moves and, you know, how they how they do their things. It's super fascinating, because especially when you consider that, like, we have the Asian population that even us in general, like we don't acknowledge because we sometimes forget about the fact mm. that we have the Asian population in this country. And mm-hmm. it's a thing of like, we have a, like a large Chinese contingent, but also like a growing kind of like, um, just people from other kind of Asian countries and stuff that like are settling here. And like they're having children who are mm. South African, South African Asians. And that's also like, how many of us also know friends that are of Asian descent also and like they mix up in the in like the and that's just like that whole thing also just about being South African it's like we haven't even really delved into that and what that means yeah. because like it's just so fascinating and yeah we're only now starting to kind of like make our way yeah. and kind of like see all this is but Karen you raise a very amazing point and it's so fascinating uh, I, I I agree and I think uh, just you were talking about South Africa specifically and the human stories out of South Africa, that's, that is what's fascinating. And I think for us, gu- us guys who love Love Island, it's always about the people. We None of us are like, oh, there's guys with hot bodies. Mm. Oh, that chick's hot. I'm going to watch every day. It's about that human relations and how the dynamics of these groups work. That's what's fascinating about Love Island. I mean, the, the nice bodies and the hot women mm. and good-looking guys, that's a bonus. But it's all about um the human relationships and that's why i love okay so who haven't we spoke about yet uh something oh we spoke durang did we speak about but we can talk about oh, Mugin if you have no, more to did. say we did but like yeah, we did. do we okay no, something we did, page we did, we did. okay wait, durang, you know like he, you tell us about durang first very... okay so so Guys, for how long did we struggle to understand what Yurang was saying, firstly? <laughs> because man was talking in sentences and we all just like, huh? Like, and then he's talking and then I'm like, okay, I'm following your train of thought. And then it's like, we're spinning in circles. And then Tim was also looking at him like, hmm. She's nodding and then she just walks away like I don't, I don't so confused. And it literally took us three days to figure out what you ran for saying. Uh. I I think I think he he was obviously the, the for the first mm-hmm. few episodes he was like the main attraction. Mm-hmm. And I was glad we kind of got to see because I, I said like after episode two, I want to see new narratives. Mm-hmm. I want to see how the other islanders are doing. But he did dominate um the first two episodes. And I think he obviously has that kind of energy, you know, he's mm. got the alpha, he's a big guy, he is good looking, he has the chat, but like I said, he doesn't have mm. that finesse just yet. He's too excited, too excited when he's chatting away. I, I, I do feel we should keep uh, a nice eye on him. I'm interested to see how he develops and who actually he starts maybe getting closer to. Will he get closer to someone I feel he's a fascinating character to like keep an eye on to see mm. how this thing progresses. Yeah, like we barely saw anyone else other than like Timna and Yurang do first two episodes. Because I was like, I literally forgot about Love Island. Islanders because I was, was like, like we really people... came in the one. I was like, who's this guy? I didn't. I didn't know his <laughs> name. I just saw a dude with a black cap. 
<laughs> but they did edit it that way. And I, I think Jay is mm. obviously a super reserved guy. He's just a uh, like a boychi, uh, like the way he had, when Xavier came to talk to him last mm. night uh, in last night's episode. Mm. I thought he handled that very maturely. Um, I don't think there's a lot of game there, but like Ian, there's uh, something about him that you like. Nah, I like you, bro. I can, I can, mm. I can, I can deal with you definitely. Um, but he doesn't have that that vibe yeah. that uh, that perhaps Durang has or. Xavier. I don't think anyone's um, anyone's uh, yeah. close to Xavier at this moment. Like, we. I'm, I'm so and I'm, I'm. I'll be honest with you. When he first came on, I was super surprised at how his character has developed. How suddenly he's the mm. one that's having the most interesting conversa- conversations. Um, and I, I wrote in my notes <laughs> that I feel like he's. One mm. of the more authentic people in there. The more I watch him, the more I was like, nah, you're quite cool. Um, I, I get a good vibe from you. I'm not on the Xavier boat yet, but he's winning me over a slowly. Lot. Uh. Who's on your boat, though? <laughs> My queen, Timna. We are here for queen Timna. She <laughs> And uh, guys, Rochelle, our messy queen, is also <laughs> yes. her and her side. The, um, yes. the two... Gossip aunties of the house. Yes, we love yes. it. We love it. Oh, the pod, and we need those the people. Guy. I was like, when she was talking to a side like it, I'm like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Are you, are you talking about Rochelle? So, yeah, I, I like, I I said she has like um, a Cruella de Vil vibes, but in a good way. Yes. Because I feel like... Um, <laughs> Cruella de Vil is, uh, mm. she's like a Machiavellian type character. She's super smart. She knows how to play the game. And that kind of draws me to her because she yeah. does seem like she loves a bit of drama and a little bit of Skinner. And mm. I like that. Mm. So I, I feel like she plays an interesting interesting role in this show. Uh, she hasn't found love, but she's making things happen. I and love the fact that she was like, weird way. she's telling a side, no, Eden has, like, Eden likes Xavier. Eden doesn't even know Eden likes Xavier, but she feels it's her duty to tell a side that. And I'm like, but why? And then she's like, no, but we're yeah. protecting Eden by, <laughs> by opening her up to, I'm like, girl, what are you doing? If that's what friends do, I don't want no friends. No. <laughs> no <this looks> like <laughs> Oh. Yeah, her and, her and um, I think her and uh, Tibna also had some, some deep, uh, they were having a, de- a chat about, I think she was talking Eden. to Tibna about uh. um, the Xavier side situation. She was very vocal about Xavier's mm. side and Eden. Rochelle, now that I come to think of it, throughout mm. the week she was speaking to Tibna about it. So, yeah, very interesting. So, like, when Eden watches this back and she realizes that <laughs> it was Rochelle. Who actually was <laughs> laying the seeds in his side's head that, you know. Do you think, sorry guys, I'm, I'm just asking as to, as to like South African men, do you think that there's a whole kind of like defensiveness about like, so what I first realized when, I, when, when KH came out and nobody stood forward for him, like he seemed to get like a bit of a chip on his shoulder, but also the other guys, they only went for the girls who stood forward for them. So it's like, you know, it has to be somebody that's showing interest. So, and with like, with aside, what I'm kind of seeing is maybe, okay, maybe he wasn't all that interested in Eden, but also once there became another person who, who he thought that Eden might like more, he all of a sudden steps back. So it's like, it's like if, if, if they don't get it, like the, um, the recognition they sort of, it puts them off. And like with the other Love Islands, like I would, like we would obviously see like the first episode, if they're like a girl and they're with another guy and the girl didn't stand forward for them, they will still pick that girl because that's who they want. And like, and like, and like, and in this show, the only person I think who could maybe do that is Xavier. I see him picking somebody off somebody else. But in this show, it's almost like if you don't show mm. me that you want yeah. me, I'm not going to do anything. But do you think it's a South African man way of thinking? I I would I would say I think it's generally speaking it's perhaps a men way of thinking I think there is a part of us that uh, that wants to be shown that we wanted like Cage was talking about that uh, quite a bit um, and with with regards to Assad uh, when you said he said I also felt 
as soon as Xavier was in the mix, mm. then suddenly he was a bit cold. He's just been, but he played it very well. That's why I say he's a smart guy. He yeah. wasn't overly, um, overly like I'm stepping back. He's just like, mm. nah, whatever happens, happens. I think he's smart like that. But I do think it does affect one's ego if there is another player um, in the game. And that's why I felt his, uh, his response to the whole affection thing was maybe a bit over the top. I'm, I, I am leaving something out there in case we miss something in terms of the editing. But I do feel he, he came a bit mm-hmm. hard and he was a bit defensive uh, with that whole affection thing. It didn't sit, sit well with me. I do think it's maybe also a thing of like, we are so big on not wanting to mm. be with people who don't want to be with us. So even like the slightest, it was like the slightest thing of like, yes, the side kind of like did kind of like step back and he was like, if you want to vibe with Xavier, go right ahead. But it's the thing of, he like, he just like, you don't want to now step on someone's like toes or like feel like, you kind of like holding on to them when they don't want to be there because I think that's a big thing that plays with like a lot of like dudes' minds. It's like, well, then why am I even trying? And that's very kind of like different from the other versions of stuff because, and that's why kind of like the UK one is so spicy because the dude will be like, no, we're gonna, we can both date this hmm. girl and we're gonna see who she picks. Mm. And like, yeah. South Africans are not used to that even now, I think, with like the Bachelorette, which I haven't really been watching, but we've just seen bits and pieces. But like, it's a thing of like, when you look at that, this is kind of the first time we see like mm-hmm. a woman dating multiple men at the same time and the men are just mm-hmm. like, kind of like, kind of sort of okay with it. Like, yes, they're kind of getting jealous, but they also understand that this is my relationship and I need to focus on mm-hmm. this with her, like regardless of what she's doing. And in all honesty, it's going to kind of, it's good kind of like representation and kind of like helping South African men kind of, I think, move forward because now it's a thing of like, okay, Mm -hmm. I don't own this girl, but like she can date whoever she wants to and we need more of that because we all know that toxic masculinity is real in this country. Absolutely. Uh, In in a size defense, because I feel like I have been coming hard at him, I wrote on episode four when Xavier entered that, Asad, uh, okay, he seemed smart and he came across as level-headed the way he handled it. Like, yes, go on the date. It's all good. But I think post-date, mm-hmm. uh, his vibe kind of changed. Initially, I thought he handled it really well, very maturely. Um, but then post-date, affection thing, uh, something something went amiss there. Absolutely. Like, I have to disagree with Cole because, like, for me, when I watched the episode, Assad handled that whole situation from beginning to, like, to, like after the date perfectly. Like, bookmark like got a gold star from how like how we did that it's like no it's fine and everything it was after the date that then he, he started like acting up but everything else before that i was like okay this we need to see more of this do you guys think Assad's gonna mm. find somebody else yeah. uh, do you think someone will come in uh, i do think he's one yes. of the guys the girls like though well i'm no i think you, that, that the think girls in the general girls like him it. like Mm. He's uh, like he's, he's he comes level mm. he comes across as very level headed, uh, and yeah he's a he's a very interesting and the whole Durang thing we yeah. haven't actually touched on that when he said he's gonna go talk to Durang. There's a bit of like there, there there's some tension there which I'm here for. I'm I'm interested to see how that goes. But um, we spoke about new girls like coming in. I mean, I'm worried about the girl that they just made dance in the wa- in the vineyards. <laughs> There's a girl dancing in a bikini in the vineyards. It was is so okay. Okay. What is she doing? She dancing for three, like three episodes already. And, three and we haven't like, like, they were both for someone they want to date. That's, yeah, no. <laughs> Yeah. And that's, I, but, I'm but not like, the biggest fan of like the only thing that... about what this editing was this is like we get these people so far in advance like and then mm, like we only get, like by the time we by the time they get in the valley you're like oh you yeah mm-hmm. you, you you um Theo you were actually you said that like Timna you hear for Timna and but I like, feel like we um, haven't spoken a lot. The new guy. Timna. And I feel like she was the big focus of... Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Let's talk about Timna. So, 
so a whole mood <laughs> she's honestly like her facial expressions and also she's just sitting there to be like judging everyone also Loki and she's but like she's like I'm not here for this this is like not on and like I love that she was able to take Durang on because mm-hmm. she wasn't willing to just take care take his like his what he was saying on face value so like and she was like no and she's also trying to kind of like suss out who could possibly um be there for but she's also like before Libo came in she was like <laughs> no none of these people are my, my cup of tea yeah i i i mean the she's really mm. good looking i i have to say that i think she's seriously Stunning. good looking um and i think the moment that encapsulated why i like her uh, a lot in last night's episode she was like um <laughs> let's always objectify men it was like the last thing of the <laughs> of, of the scene and i was like that is so good she's super witty her and Rachel, yeah. they've got a, a wittiness about them which I do I'm, think I'm that um for. that like she also has the biggest like canon see in the game right now because if like they're paying attention she is the most popular one she was the one that got voted to go with Xavier there's no other reason other than her being super mm. popular nobody knew anything about Xavier it wasn't exactly like there was a Rochelle was single and they picked her over mm. over Rochelle and and I mean like I mean, I don't know who's going to win this poll yeah. now, but we've been doing polls from the, the podcast and seeing, like, who are people voting for. And, like, 90% of the people are saying they're voting for Termina. Mm. So, I mean, obviously, there's a large contingent of people who aren't on Twitter who are voting. But, mm. I mean, you know, like, between her and Xavier, like, they got the most votes. Yeah. And, and like, so the thing is, like, if she's smart, she's like, the audience yeah. clearly That's loves true. me. I'm the person you want to team up with. Yeah. Mm. And she, and I, yeah, I I agree, and I, I think for a lot of fans, uh, why she has that currency as well, because if you've watched enough Love Islands, you've seen what happens on the first day to like the Yawandas and the Samiras, and it's just and the same thing happens mm-hmm. in South Africa now, um, despite us being eighty um, percent. Uh, black you know in terms of population so i think that's honestly why uh besides her being cool and everything but a lot of my uh my currency i give to us because mm. we've seen this we've been on this rodeo before man where the the black woman is, is picked last or you know there's only one option uh or i, I don't know i just feel like i've seen that opening first show before many times and like the problem is that I would love to see a white man pick a black woman. I'm just going to say that outright. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And I completely I agree. Don't... You guys. Yeah. Especially is it going to happen? Of... Well, especially like, I think, yeah, we because have like, a more... I mean, we've um, seen so far. We do kind of tend to have a fair share of interracial couples. Yeah, we've seen so far, like, we've seen white women or uh, be willing to date outside of their race. But we aren't seeing that. Even, like, like when, when, when Ian was the last one left, and I'm like, Ian said Sarah was too conservative for him. Now he's got a choice between a colored woman and a black woman. Um, <laughs> how is that going to go down with his family? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, if you... If you... I don't see which of the current white guys would necessarily... If I had to put money mm. on someone, perhaps Jay. Uh, but I, I, I don't know where it's... I, like, I don't feel after one week, uh, maybe because it's one week or maybe because it's editing, I I don't know. I can't predict their next moves, like, uh, with confidence. But I would, if I had to put money on it, I would probably say Jay might be the first. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. <laughs> it's just weird. Okay, are we are we all good? 
Okay, so here's the thing. The Love Island production demons that haunted the Love Island set haunted the podcasting section too. So even though um, we recorded quite a bit of audio this morning, some of it did not come through because of internet problems apparently around the Western Cape. And so um, a large portion was cut out, especially from my audio, which means that everything else was messed up. And because we are trying to record and release today, the turnaround time means that we just did not even have enough time to fix it. Also, I'm doing the the editing, which I apologize to you guys. So um, I'm just going to play a little clip now of Carl and Theo giving their handles and saying where you can find them. And then otherwise, catch us back next week. We have some, we'll have two new guests and a lot of other chatter about whatever's happening in Love Island. Oh, well, I'm really only on Twitter, at Carl Lewis, at Carl underscore Lewis said A. But I don't, I don't think I'm like a religious poster of Love Island. So there's mainly sports, but there is the odd Love Island there because I, I don't like to tweet uh, during Love Island. Because I'm focused on my notes for your show, Gavin. So <laughs> maybe post show. And I am on, like, mostly on Twitter at the Lion Matters, and I do um, sometimes li- live tweet the show. And it does you do like miss some things, but for the most part, you kind of like having to like watch and tweet is is very interesting. But um, you can't miss out on the mess. Twitter is just too lit because sometimes something funny will happen on there and and you just like it just uh it's just fun it's just fun um so yeah i'm at at the lion matters on twitter